Hi everybody, welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm a transformation coach, I'm an energy healer, I'm a shamanic practitioner, and I'm the founder of the Transformation Center based in Westport, Connecticut. So at the center, you know, in addition to the individual healing and coaching sessions that I do, we also host a variety of workshops, classes, we even have sound baths in the backyard where our labyrinth is, of course, when the weather's nice. So everything is on the website. You can check it out, all the events, um, the calendar, and you know, we'll put up our contact info. That's transformationcenterct.com. And text, call, anything. We especially welcome beginners on the path. Love to hear from you too. So you know, the whole purpose of the center is really in assisting you to discover who you truly are. So that's, you know, uncovering your limiting beliefs, transforming them, um, just learning, you know, letting go of everything that you're not so you can be who you truly are. And from that place, you can create a life that you love. So again, welcome to the show today. I am very excited that my guest is Josh Kane. Welcome to the show, Josh. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is really great. Excited to be here. First time we've met in person. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just going to read a little bit about you before we get started. Great. Okay, because you have a really interesting background that I'm just discovering. All right. So for our audience, um, so we're going to put up your contact info as well, so they'll know great. how to contact Thank you. you. Yeah. yeah. So Josh is from New Haven, Connecticut, and he's the owner of Gandiva Yoga. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to tell us all about that I am. in a few minutes. Yes. And there he teaches the traditional spiritual science of yoga, but as it relates to our modern day society. So I think there's a, you know, a little bit of a twist on it there. I'm interested to hear about. And he's also a lifelong musician and former child actor. <laughs> <laughs> it gets better, right? It just keeps okay. going. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hear about that 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 journey. And when he was younger, he was fortunate enough to be featured in over forty national commercials. He made various extra appearances on Conan O'Brien and Saturday Night Live when you were a kid. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I wonder if I saw you. No. <laughs> you might have. Yeah. And even he once worked with Steve Martin. Oh, I bet yeah, that was interesting. That was, that was incredible. I bet. Yeah, and he was the primary touring and studio drummer for the band Uh Huh Her for nearly 10 years. He has written hundreds of original songs. He's performed or recorded with nearly 150 artists and bands and DJs in both New York and LA, by Coastal, of course. Josh is here today to tell us about, you know, bring clarity, tell us about his story, and then bring, bring clarity to some of the common misconceptions about yoga in our modern society. Yeah, all right, cool. And he's also gonna give us some helpful tips for finding lasting happiness that you can apply to your life right now. I love that. You know, because I really sense, and I, you know, like I said, I haven't met Josh before, but I really get that you're, you're a happy guy. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, I, I loved everything that you said in the beginning about removing all the things that you're not so that you can be who you are. Yeah. And um, there really is, evidence that what that that statement can work for people um, and and it's it's so common for for us to try to be a lot of things for people to get what we think that we need and so in a lot of the work that we do is helping people to sort of turn inward and say well y if you already have everything that you need and you already are everything then why not just share that with people authentically and let the right people find you Yes, yes, be your authentic self. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, when we're growing up, so so many influences are there to kind of take us away from that. In yoga, we call that karma. And yeah. that there are, there are different, um, see, karma, and a lot of these terms are words that people kind of throw around. Mm -hmm. But within the tradition of yoga, there are certain specific definitions for these words. And it goes a lot deeper than most people think. Yeah. So... Some of our fixed karmas, which are things that happen to us mm -hmm. in this life that we cannot change, are the place that we're born, mm -hmm. the family that we're born into, mm -hmm. and the time kind of and number. location yeah. that we're born. Yeah, so those things sort of set us into motion yeah. in our lives, and they define certain things about who we are. And um, 
and then learning how to discern as you get onto the spiritual path, um, what choices do you actually have with what you've been given? So those are karmas that you can, you kind of take part in. They're mm -hmm. not so fixed. So if you go this way, you're going to give a certain type of a result. If you go that way, you're going to get a different type of result. And who's deciding? Is it the, right. the parent? Is it the teacher? Is it the early influence? Or is it your authentic self now? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's fascinating to contemplate these things. Yeah. You know, well, two things that, that occur to me when you're saying that. Like, do you also believe that as a soul, we do choose who we're being born to, um, to get the lessons that we need to learn in this lifetime? Um, I've heard that before, and I've, I've been sitting with it. I think it's possible, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure, because it seems like the soul goes from one incarnation to the next. It goes from body to body. Mm -hmm. And so there is essentially only one soul that's split into individual pieces. And those individual pieces, they scatter and then they kind of find their way back together. And that's sort of the, mm -hmm. the order according to the texts, according mm -hmm. to, the, to the system yeah. of yoga. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think that in, rather than thinking about it as like, I go to some, and this is how I, maybe I conceive of it. Mm -hmm. Some people say we go to this place like an in-between or an, a spirit realm and then we like look down on the earth plane and we decide, okay, I'm gonna choose these parents, I'm gonna choose this location, I'm gonna choose that stuff. But if those karmas are fixed, we're not really choosing it. Mm -hmm. It's a result of what we've already chosen in previous births. Right. Right. So now that I'm here, uh, what I'm looking at for my karma is what I decided back then. And so if I wanna improve for the next life and for this life, mm -hmm. I have to start making choices now that are a reflection of where I want to be. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Because I think as, as humans, we can't really um, understand it. You know, I don't, I don't think we're meant to understand everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we can understand ourselves, ideally. And, and, and if I can understand myself, yes. then um, everything sort of falls into place. Yeah, don't you find that the more you understand about yourself, that the more you can accept about yourself and therefore... Hopefully. Every <laughs> <laughs> there are certain things where I'm like, really? That's okay. Well, you're yeah. still young. <laughs> well, I'm not that young. <laughs> Relatively not, yeah, not young enough to say that I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so. can't use that one. But no, but I think it, it's, it's, it becomes more apparent that we're all one. Yes. You know, we're yeah. all in this together and yeah. even further than that. Yeah, yeah. And so we can accept ourselves and then accept everything else. Mm -hmm. And even if I can't, um, even if I don't agree with it. Uh, so I don't, this is what I've been telling myself and I've been telling my students. You don't have to like something. You don't have to agree with it. But accepting it is the work. Accepting that it exists and then dealing with your own feelings and responses towards that thing that's that's your that's, that's the that's, work yeah, yeah absolutely yeah because we yeah and we can't necessarily I mean you know what we what we disagree with if we put too much behind it and fight it then it's just gonna get stronger that's my view my yeah. experience view. yeah yeah and it reinforces this idea that we're well you're this way and I'm this way my way because it's comfortable for me is the right way your way is uncomfortable for me so that can't be right so there can only be one. But if I'm learning about you and I'm learning about what makes you who you are, why you have the, what's your experience been like that got you to this point? And do you believe in a higher power? And you know, many names, but it's all, if you, be, if you only believe in one God or one source of creation, then the many names for God are really just one name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all it's all the same it's underneath. All, right. That's, that's the right. way I look at it. Right. Too. And then how we how we interpret it, how we embody it and model it in our everyday lives. I mean, that's where you really start to see, mm -hmm. you know, what how how spiritual are you? How how religious are you? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Well, this is really I love this conversation. Me but, too. But I, but I but I also <laughs> want to find out more about you know how did you go from being a child actor and a musician to what you're doing now? It's a great question. Yeah. Um, so as a child actor, 
I, I had to, um, I faced a lot of rejection and a lot of anticipation for, for things to happen in my life, like fame or stardom or notoriety, recognition. And, and, and growing up like that, it kind of conditioned me to believe certain things about myself, to, to, to act a certain way in, in real life. So that maybe yeah. it wasn't so authentic. Well, right. Why right. did you want to be a child actor to begin with? Maybe I should Well, I just, it just sort of happened. Um, it, it, my sister had a singing teacher, and the singing teacher had a connection to an agent in New York City. And I was eight years old at the time, so I didn't really know anything about anything. You know, I was just like a happy kid. And uh, the singing teacher set up an audition for my sister to go and meet with this agent, and my sister decided that she didn't want to do it, but the appointment was already set. So they asked me if I would go in her place, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, and I was like, all right, yeah, I'll do it. I don't, whatever, I'll try to be on TV. And So is that karma? <laughs> I, I I think it is. Yeah, because it's a choice that I made that I then had to be responsible for. Uh -huh, but the opportunity I was I there. I didn't have to make a choice. So yeah, so the, the root of karma is essentially choice. Okay. And that and like what we try to do throughout our lives is we try to put the responsibility of our choices on others. Mm. But really, I even though I was a child, it, it, I made that choice. It was a choice that was offered to me. I said yes, so now yeah. I have that karma. Yeah. So um, after dealing with you know, a decade of growing up with rejection and failure, anticipation, excitement, all, I lived a whole life in that wow. 10 years. Um, I finally got to a point where, and I'd been playing, I'd been a, a musician ever since I was even younger than that. Okay. Uh, so I always had that. Um, and I ended up getting an audition for the Blue Man Group in New York City when I was in my, my early 20s. And I thought, this is it. This is my way of being able to combine the drumming that I love with the acting that I've been kind of working towards my whole life, hoping to get this break. And, uh, and I, I went on the auditions. I put on the blue paint. I met with all the casting directors, and I did not get it. But what they did tell me was that... Um, I should start doing more yoga and learn how to meditate because I had great instincts, but I really lacked focus. Huh. So even though I, it was accompanied by one of the worst perceived failures and rejections of my early life, it put me onto this path of, well, here, even though you had to deal with this, like I'm going to give you a tool to be able to heal from it now. Well, so no accident. Right. No, 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 accents. You know, yeah. if, you know that saying is like if, 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 if you get the messages from the universe and you're not listening, you know, if they're too subtle, perhaps, then you just kind of get bopped over the head. <laughs> Eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that, yeah. So that's, so that got you on the path of meditation and, and yeah, and, yeah. And then huh. uh, really discovering that there's this whole universe uh, of esoteric knowledge about the the human the path of the human and what um, really discerns being a human from being an animal or being a fish or being a tree that we have a certain type of a responsibility and that there have been throughout the ages many societies many cultures and many very prominent i think often misunderstood individuals but uh it, prominent figures nonetheless that have really documented and spent a lot of time looking at this this union of you know our material life within society and then our spiritual as humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you spent a lot of time studying that. Did you go Definitely. out to um, California? Were you out there? I was. I was in I was in Los Angeles from two thousand and six until two thousand fourteen. Okay. And that was a very eye-opening experience because the West Coast, I mean, as you know, is it's like, different. it's just awakened. Yeah. yeah. So. What about, were you up at the um, Esalen? I was at the Esalen Institute. Institute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I spent about six months there. All right. Because one of my spiritual teachers was in, I don't know what year it was, but the early stages of the human potential. Yes. Movement. Yeah. That's all connected. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Michael <laughs> Murphy, Dick Price. Uh, they were the two founders of the Esalen Institute, and that was really kind of their goal was to take um, these prominent figures of the time and give them a place where people could come and experience this idea of human awakening and human potential yeah. for themselves. And it's a lot of good stuff in there. Oh my goodness! I mean, when you walk into a room that Alan Watts is—I mean, they have a room there that's called Watts, and that's where wow. he, that was his room. Oh. 
and Hunter S. Thompson used to work at the gate with like a 45 and 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 the Beatles would go there. I mean, it was it's a really, really intense. And it's still going, I think. Still going. Yeah. 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 So I felt very. So you had a good experience. Oh, a wonderful experience there. Yeah. yeah. And that was early on in your. That was okay. right around uh, 2012. OK. So that was a little bit a little bit later on from, yeah. from being there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that was. So what are some of the other influences that you've had along your way? Uh, well, my parents are, are a huge influence. My, my, my mother and my father were very supportive um, of me growing up. And, and my mom was the one who basically was taking, she was managing me. So she was taking me through this whole journey of acting. We really did together. So I would not have been able to do any of that without her. And my father is a, um, he's a, a, an attorney and a mediator. And his huge, his like life's purpose is really like, conscious yes. conflict resolution and um, and he's now doing this wonderful thing which is called um, collaborative dispute resolution which I mean like we we just get to have all these wonderful conversations about building peace and mm -hmm. and how to remove the ego from the situation so I feel like I really I get a lot of that from from him well it seems like it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's very refreshing especially you know because lawyers don't have that re reputation right necessarily right right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um my my drum teacher Artie Dixon uh he's oh, from yeah. Orange Connecticut yeah he's a, familiar oh, he's a phenomenal musician he played with Ahmad Jamal at Carnegie Hall and studied with Jack DeJanet I mean Jack played on Bitches Brew with Miles Davis so wow. I mean it's just the, yeah world-class level of yeah. musicianship but also Artie's a very faithful um, spiritual person and so his his love for philanthropy and and community outreach and building community and understanding the importance he was one of the few the, the first people that really like reached me with this idea of God you know that, mm. that God is real God is a part of you you are a part of God mm -hmm. and this is something that you need to be resourcing to create something better in in our lives makes, like that was really already that did that for me it's awesome because that yeah. makes such a difference yeah oh yeah you know one thing that occurred to me when we were talking about um, the other stuff about like um, you know we, we live in a, a universe of free will yes which we were discussing but recently I've been doing some work and taking courses um, on universal laws mm -hmm. and one is the, the law of free will but how much um, better it flows when you're in alignment with the divine will yes yes and the the so those universal laws they they apply differently to the human than they do to the animal or the mineral okay. so as humans we are so the sun, this is the, the way that I put it to my students, is that the sun can't just wake up one morning and decide I'm not doing this today. <laughs> Doesn't have the free will to do that. True. So what we have as free will, like the sun in a Vedic sense, like and with Veda, yoga, they kind of are interchangeable, but in the, in the Vedic sense, the sun did make a choice to be the sun and it took on that responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so it chooses with its free will to live as that for us. Mm -hmm. But with us, because of the unique type of consciousness, the quality of consciousness that we have, um, embodied consciousness, I should say, uh, we get to make choices moment by moment. Mm -hmm. And so we, it gives us a, a much higher level of responsibility, but also a greater level of confusion. Is <laughs> what do you choose? <laughs> it, can, it, it, it definitely can be. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but I love the, the, the freedom aspect of it. Yeah. And so, well. so going back to what you said before about the divine coming and knocking you on the head, yeah. because we have all these choices, sometimes the divine has to come and go, hey, go that way. Yeah. This is this is where I'm calling yeah, you. And then yes, if, yeah. if you don't start making your choices in that direction in accordance with divine will, divine will says, OK, now I'm going to force, not force you, but slap but you. I'm slap really going to encourage you. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, before we run out of time, I mean, now we have some time left, but I want to hear about, you know, the, the modern aspects of yoga. Like yes. So much more yeah. than just yeah. the, the poses. Absolutely. Um, so Gandiva yoga is uh, that was something that I created uh, to be my own um, yoga center and like teaching resource for the community. And uh, 
Uh, what what's the name? The yeah. name comes from the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is essentially the Bible of yoga. Yes. And there's uh, two main characters in that story. One of them is God in a personal form, and his name is Krishna. Mm -hmm. And then there's his student who is also uh, a prince and a warrior, and his name is Arjuna. Arjuna's weapon is a bow. Mm -hmm. The bow's name is Gandiva. Okay. So that's where it is. So, right yeah, it. and within the text, what happens is um, uh, Arjuna lays down his bow in battle to arm himself with the weapon of yoga. Okay, great. So, so there's a little bit of a, you know, kind of a metaphorical thing, yes, like, yes. you know, you can use external tools or internal tools and, yeah. I love that. Uh, so within Gandiva, um, I try to keep things very simple, and, and this is a very similar mission to what you're working on, which is, you know, through the practices of yoga, discover your, your true purpose and try to remove any obstacles to feeling like you can be your authentic self. Yeah. And through the movements and the, the breathing exercises and the mantras and music, uh, we're trying to strengthen your, your physical being to be able to tolerate high levels of uncertainty mm. so that you can make the choices that you really want to make. Because if you go the way that you've always gone, you get what you always got. Yeah. But you have to be resolved and courageous to make a different choice and, yeah. and then actually believe that it could work or be willing to fail. Like, I mean, wow. you got to be strong for that. So yeah, that's that's what we're yeah. trying to be. Yeah, and it's good to fail. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, it's learning. Yeah. Now I have an actual experience as opposed yes. to just this idea that right. well, the I'm not good enough it. or yeah. I'm not smart enough. Right. What if it doesn't work? All yeah. these what ifs. But if I do it and I fail, quote unquote, or it doesn't work, then I go, all right, now I have a different choice I can make. Yeah. I can either continue to learn about this and push myself, or you know what, I don't like that. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Now I don't have that bothering me over here anymore. Yeah. And one way or the other, it's a learning experience. Absolutely. And you get it out of your yeah. your way. Like yeah. you said, it's an yeah. obstacle. Yeah. You know, fear to me, it's like that is our that is our main issue in our society right now. Yeah. That's my belief. I I it's underneath yeah. anger, it's underneath everything. Yeah. So anyway, I got off track a little bit. No, there, you but. didn't. No, you didn't, because <laughs> People, that it's that fear that's at the root of personal doubt. Mm -hmm. So resolving the fear, if then a type of a confidence or a willingness can then blossom. Yeah. Well, and, it opens you up. Yes. You know, and to me, the antidote for fear is love. Well, people define love in different ways. Mm -hmm. So even though I might try to love you in the best way that I know how, if you fear love, that's a whole other hmm. dynamic, which now is also uh, something I think that our society is learning about, um, how to love someone even if they love differently. And understand that you don't have to like them. It's, 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 a, it's very textured, but. Yeah, well, I think, I think that's the key thing because to me, love is not necessarily, it can be, but it's not only an emotion. Right. It's like a way of being. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, you come from because I, I believe yeah. also that we are love. We were created right. in love. Right. So you know, I look at you, I see love. Yeah. Well, so. the I guess I would what I would say to that is I wonder what a child who comes from a broken home, mm. what's their perception of love? What's a, a person who has lived their life in incarceration? What's their definition of love, and how do they feel loved? Yeah. So then learning, you know, learning how to how to understand each other and that there can be fear and love can kind of coexist a desire for love. Uh, yeah, yeah, there there's we're very dynamic creatures, ultimately, you yeah. know, and and so Flexible. having having a place to um, to be your <laughs> to be your authentic self to work through some of this stuff. Ultimately, that's really what Gandiva is about. And then right. trying to be a, 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 a knowledgeable resource mm -hmm. to say, I, I, ha I understand what I need to be loved. I know how I like to feel loved. And I've worked through my own fears to a point where I was willing to put my whole, everything in my life into 
this one effort. I quit every other job. I stopped teaching at every other student. I burned all the boats and was like, this is it. I'm going into business for myself and making this studio. So I had to overcome a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety to do that. And so that gives me a level of credibility to say, if I can do it, you can do it. And I will guide you through that. And I'm actually going to give you a practice that by its definition says, you'll know that you're doing this right if you're happy, even when things aren't going your way. Oh, that is a great indicator. That's, yeah. Yes, because it's not dependent, you're it. not dependent on external right. forces. You know that good things happen and bad things happen. Some people are going to be right. Some people are going to be wrong. And that's just the way of life. But your happiness can't be dictated by these things. Otherwise, it's, you're just going to be bouncing around like a buzzing around like a fly. I mean, to me, that's that's it in a nutshell. You know, that's it. if you can teach somebody that and they really get it. Yeah. You know, because it's, you know, also we can tell people stuff all day and all night. Yeah. But they have to experience it for themselves. Yeah. It's yeah. all about yeah, that. They do. You they know, do. and I think that's why a yoga studio is a perfect place for all of that. Yeah. Because if you're just, if you're not um, practicing it or, you know. Yeah, and surrounded it. by others who are practicing it as well. Yes, have um, a community of support. Yeah, that's something that my, my yoga teacher, Raghunath, is amazing at that. Um, he's really, uh, he gave me really the inspiration to be able to go full force and what he mm -hmm. taught me about, like, the tradition of yoga more than just the the western kind of workout routine yeah, yeah. um but uh yeah it's 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 really important to have people around you that are going through the same stuff so yeah. that you you have a sort of lifelines for that yeah yeah so well, that's wonderful that you're offering that and you know having because there, like you said there's so many opportunities for people just to go to a yoga studio they just go they they leave they don't right it's not really necessarily right. a community i know they try to build them right well it's a it's sometimes happen the the community revolves around um getting i'm getting away from my material life for a little bit and i'm kind of escaping here and i'm just going to move my wow. my material life my thoughts don't really stop i'm getting my workout in but then i don't and, and then it becomes kind of like a social currency is what I call it. So you can walk around and you can talk about while you're complaining about how horrible people are and you're you're griping about how you don't understand why your kids do the things that they do and you want a new car, you want all this stuff. It's like, but I did yoga today. So I'm working on it. It's like, you're not working on it. Yeah, it's a you just, you're just kind of dabbling that in yeah, there. But yeah. if you were working on it, you would try to catch yourself with all that complaining. Yeah. You'd be happy with the car that you have and you try to really listen to your kids instead of, oh, you know, That's a really good point, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a... The, so distinguishing that we're not just here to get away from our material life. We're not going to get away from our material life. So don't fool yourself into thinking mm -hmm. that you can get away from that. You can't. No, no. But you can interact with your material life in a more conscious way, and then you'll get a different result. It won't always be what you want, but you don't really know what you want anyways. <laughs> It, takes a while. <laughs> it does. Well, that's a good. We're gonna have to wrap it up. Okay. We're running yeah, out yeah, of yeah. I'm Josh, but this was so interesting. This was wonderful. You. I really Thank you. It. Yeah, I appreciate well, you having me on Josh's here. Contact info one more time at Gandiva Studio, right? Yeah, yeah. Gandiva Yoga, and yeah. thank you to the Westport Library Verso Studios for hosting this as always. Namaste. Namaste.